Grace to you and peace and welcome to this online service of worship. My name is Erin Bowers and I am the associate pastor here at First Presbyterian Church in High Point, North Carolina. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us today through this video format. In the church's liturgical calendar, today is Pentecost Sunday a day when we celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit among us, and also a day that many refer to as the birthday of the church. Our prayer is that you will know the presence of the Holy Spirit in your own life this day. Come, let us worship God. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 104. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in God's works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles. Who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to God. For I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit be our goal and our strength, now and always. Amen. Let us pray together, confessing our sin before God. God of wind and flame, you pour out your spirit on all your children, empowering the least and the lofty to tell of your mighty deeds. We hear the sound and feel the heat, but instead of recognizing your presence among us, we sneer and refuse to believe you speak through people we would not choose to proclaim your message. Forgive us for attempting to limit your spirit. Silence our cynicism 
and possess us with your word of grace. Make us your witnesses, those who break down dividing walls between people and relish the new community made possible through the life and love of Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear the good news. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you then in the name of Jesus Christ, your sin, my sin, all of our sin together is forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives us all our sin strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Numbers 11, 24 through 30. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's peoples were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. If you are a person of order, if you like your calendar, if you like being scheduled, these last couple of months may have been a real challenge for you. All of the sudden, all the days have felt the same. There has been some sort of a rhythm to the week for me, but it sure has been weird. I usually film my sermon on Friday. So now Sunday is over by Friday. Sunday is now an actual weekend day for me, which it never has been before. This past week we had Monday off for Memorial Day, which was nice but confusing. And it's hard to tell the difference between a Tuesday and a Thursday and a Saturday. All of them are work days, and all of them are days at home. Presbyterians are people of order. I imagine you are well aware of that. This is one of the reasons that I am quite at home in the Presbyterian Church. We have a very orderly form of government. We worship in an orderly fashion. And we like it that way. And I, for one, think it is a good way. 
But the story that we read today from Numbers offers a challenge to those of us who are lovers of order. The story from Numbers is perhaps one of the most challenging stories in the whole Bible for Presbyterians. Because we Presbyterians have an understanding about how we do things and about who does what. And we have this representational system of church government and we understand that God works through it. And it seemed like God had given Moses an order to follow, too. See, in the verses just before the ones we heard read, God had instructed Moses to choose the 70 elders and bring them out to the tent of meeting. So that's exactly what Moses did. He brought the 70 elders out to the tent, and the Spirit came upon them. And as the text tells us, they prophesied. There were two men back at the camp, however, who were not among the 70. They were not among the chosen ones. And the Spirit came to them, too. And they prophesied as well, right there in the camp. Well, that seemed to cause something of a tizzy because a young man, a tattletale really, ran and told Moses that these two men were prophesying. And Joshua, Moses' right-hand man, told Moses to put a stop to it because an order had been established and everyone was following the rules. Everyone except the Spirit. God established the order, but God is also free to work where God will work. Today is Pentecost, and it is the day that we sometimes refer to as the birthday of the church and the day that we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. We know the Holy Spirit as comforter, as advocate, as one who helps. But today's text paints a somewhat different picture of the Holy Spirit. Today the Holy Spirit is one who does things out of order one who disrupts. Now, the reading from Numbers isn't the only reading there is in the lectionary for Pentecost. Had we read the traditional story of the day of Pentecost from Acts chapter 2, we would have read the story of the Holy Spirit arriving like a rush of violent wind, arriving like tongues of fire, confusing the crowd as it gave the ability to speak in different languages to those who were gathered there. It was such a disruptive scene that some thought that those who were speaking were drunk. But Peter reminded them that no, this was just the way of the Spirit the disruptive spirit, the one who interrupts, the one who takes our sense of order and makes it feel like disorder, and who does this with power. This Holy Spirit changes things and inspires us to change things too. The Holy Spirit is also a bond. It is what binds us together as the body of Christ. And so during 
this disruptive time in our lives, I am thankful for the ways that the disruptive Holy Spirit has been among us, working in these days, shaping us, using us, and binding us ever more closely as the body of Christ. I'm thankful for the disruptive work of the Holy Spirit who has bound us together as a church staff, a staff who I have never heard complain, even when asked to do their jobs in strange and unusual ways. I am thankful that when we first closed the church offices back in March, the most disruptive thing for you all at first had to do with where you would bring the food you had collected for our community. And so I am thankful for the disruptive work of the Holy Spirit who has inspired you to continue to try to feed people people in this congregation, people in our community. I am thankful for those of you who have been prompted by the Spirit to continue your work with mobile meals or open door ministries, or to start working with those agencies for the first time because you find yourself with more free time and for your creativity in figuring out how to do that safely. I am thankful for the disruptive work of the Holy Spirit who has bound us together in strange new ways through technology, through online worship, some of us learning how to do Zoom meetings for the first time so that we could do the necessary work of the church or so that we could gather together for a Bible study or a choir meeting or another small group. I am thankful for the disruptive work of the Holy Spirit that has had us take on mission and ministry on our own without committees to organize us because the Spirit moves where it will. So that some of us have begun making masks for one another or delivering groceries for one another. And so, so many of us have been sending cards and calling one another and texting one another just to check up on each other. I am thankful for the disruptive work of the Holy Spirit binding us together in new ways as we make porch visits to one another. Some of us never having been to each other's homes before now making deliveries of baked goods and puzzles and trading hand-me-downs as we clean out closets. I am thankful for the disruptive work of the Holy Spirit, which allows others to worship with us on Sundays, those who are members of other churches here in our community and afar. And for us to worship with other con congregations all around our country on Sundays. One of the silver linings in this dark cloud that we can experience a variety of different worship services with multiple congregations on a given week. I'm thankful for the ways the Holy Spirit binds us with all believers in this way because it cannot possibly hurt us to be in worship more than once a week on a Sunday morning. I'm thankful for the disruptive 
work of the Holy Spirit in creativity for car parades, for birthdays and graduations and retirements, for chalking driveways and sidewalks to say I love you, for those people, especially teachers, who have found creative ways to develop good and positive online content. I am thankful for the disruptive work of the Holy Spirit that has brought us together in more one-on-one -on -one personal connections than in the past. That we have been able to visit one on, with one another through walks and sitting in our yards and letting our children ride bikes together and through phone calls, that we've been able to have deeper conversations with one another. That while we might not be gathering as a large group, that so many one-on-one -on -one personal relationships are flourishing as the Spirit drives us to reach out to one another. Mostly, I am thankful for each one of you. In a few moments, you will see each other's faces. I know that not all of you were able to send me a photo, and honestly, if all of you had done so, this service might be a lot longer than it is. But I hope that by seeing some of your faces in these photos, it will be a reminder that together we are the church, that it is not the building, but the spirit that resides in each of us and is the spirit that binds us together as one. And I hope you will also remember that this same spirit is disruptive, that it blows where it will, that it doesn't abide by any arbitrary rules that you and I think it ought to follow. So, invi so I invite you to continue to look for ways that the Holy Spirit might disrupt your life in the days ahead. When we are in places of discomfort, when our, our calendars and our time seem disrupted, when we are neither here nor there, those kinds of times can be times of holy disruption. When the Holy Spirit will speak to us in this uncomfortable state, to help move us to something new. The Holy Spirit is powerful and it disrupts our lives and it can change us forever. The good news though is that this disruption isn't meant to destroy but to build up. And what's more, the good news is that there's enough of the Holy Spirit's power for everyone. Which is why Moses wasn't worried when he found out that there were others who were not among the 70 elders prophesying back at the camp. And why he said to Joshua, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Moses wasn't worried because he understood that the spirit's power wasn't something that was scarce. 
something that needed to be hoarded or protected for oneself. It wasn't something that he had to compete for. And perhaps this is the most disruptive thing of all. That because the Holy Spirit's power is available to everyone, everywhere, this power is not yours or mine to control. This has been a disruptive time for all of us. But it can also be a holy time. If we are open to those moments, those holy disruptions in our lives, we might just find God using us in ways that we never could have or would have imagined on our own. Would that all the Lord's people were prophets. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, as we come before you in prayer this day, we give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit who helps us to pray as we should and who gives words to the prayers that we don't dare to speak aloud. Lord of all, we are unable to gather in one place. We grieve our inability to sit beside one another, sing together, and pray together in person. Even as we lament what is lost when we cannot be in the same physical space, we rejoice that nothing separates us from the love of Jesus Christ, and there is no barrier that can prevent the Holy Spirit's coming to us. United in Christ, bound by the Spirit, our community is real and strong, no matter where we are. And so, Almighty God, we pray for the church. Holy Spirit, fill your church today. Enliven us and inspire us to live out our calling as the body of Christ. When we, your church, seek power, show us the way of service. When we, your church, seek its own counsel, correct us with the truth of your eternal word. When we, your church, become apathetic, fearful, or pessimistic, give us faith, hope, and love guide and direct your church today as we work together for the purposes of your kingdom. Holy God, on this Pentecost Sunday, we recognize the work of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives. For your invisible presence revealed in the unexpected moment. For your silent power surprising us in its irresistible challenge for your unlikely people chosen to carry the message of Jesus Christ to the world. We give you thanks, O God. We ask for the hope and comfort of your spirit for those whose lives are overshadowed by illness or pain, for those whose lives are darkened by sorrow or loss. We ask for the energy and vision of your spirit for those who are tiring in the battle against injustice and oppression, for those exhausted by the struggle with poverty and hunger. We ask for the peace and joy of your spirit for those living in the shadow of war and violence, for those eaten up by guilt and anxiety, and for those for whom the Christian life has become hard and dry. We ask for the guidance and strength of your spirit for those uncertain how to use their time, talents, and gifts, for those tempted to do what is wrong, We ask for the love and courage of your spirit for those reaching out to comfort the distressed, for those reaching out to others with the good news of Christ. Loving God, we ask for the assurance of your spirit to know your presence with us in our daily lives, in our relationships, in our work and service, in our worship, in our times of joy and pain. Holy Spirit, help us. Even as we pray this day, the prayer Jesus Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Your eyes.
Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.